Welcome back to Sparks of Joy Studio. This is Natalie, and today I have nine upcycled kitchen items to show you. Let's start out with this gorgeous, really big, or at least one of the biggest I've seen breadboards that I found at the thrift store. And we're going to be starting it off painting it in White Swan by DIY. One thing that you probably don't know about me yet, um, but I am not a kitchen person. I guess I am not a chef. I am not a baker. My husband is the one who does all the cooking and cleaning of the kitchen in our house. So it's kind of interesting that this entire theme for today's video is all kitchen items. But I will say, I do think it's pretty cool that there is a way to take old items that you find at the thrift store and in this case, kitchen items, and be able to style them up and use them as decor in other ways. So um, that's, I guess, what really inspired me for today. Once I painted both sides of the board and let it dry, I did give it two coats. I'm now coming in with Kindest Regards stamp by IOD, and I'm going to be inking it up with black ink and stamping it from the bottom all the way up to the handle of the breadboard. I let that ink dry and then I took this transfer from the Whispering Willow IOD transfer set and I'm trying to figure out the best way to position this on the board. That is actually why I cut it down the middle and originally my plan was to put one half of the flower coming out from the right side of the board and then the other half above that coming out from the left side of the board. I trimmed the transfer just so it would fit nicely around the two brackets that you see at the bottom of this breadboard and then I began transferring it on. I burnished the transfer into the board and then sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer. And here is a look at the finished project. For this next project, I have this bamboo cutting board. I actually got them in bulk off of Amazon. I will leave that link in the description box. And I'm going to do a whitewash on one side of it, and then I will be painting the other side of it in black. I believe it is coal black by Fusion. The goal here is to create a reversible board that has different styles, but that do have some sort of um, cohesion between them. Once both sides are dry, I'm going to take a 220 grit sandpaper and just very lightly sand the edges of the black side of the board just to take away some of the, I guess, obvious places where I had painted to the edge. I wanted it to look a little bit more blended in. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to be taking this stamp from the new IOD 2024 release Veranda Stamp Set and I want to stamp this lattice pattern across the entire board. I am using IOD ink in white which creates such a wonderful contrast to the coal black. For the front of the board, we're going to be using Le Courier Stamp Set by IOD, and I'm going to be stamping across the entire middle. I want to fill the entire base of the board with the entire stamp, and then I'm going to take just bits of it, those two um, circle stamps that you see on the bottom right, and I'm going to stamp each of them up the handle of the board. Now I'm going to be taking some of the transfers from the Whispering Willow IOD transfer set and I'm going to start with these leaves, transferring them onto the bottom right. Now I'm coming back in with one of the birds from this transfer set and I'm going to be layering it on top of the leaves that I just transferred on. I decided to add a pink flower from the set to this other side of the board. I sealed up this project on both sides and I did also add in a few surprises that you will see in the final reveal. Please let me know what you think of this reversible board. For our next project, this is another smaller cutting board that I found at the thrift store. I definitely loved the shape of it and I'm going to start out by painting it in two coats of Lamp White by Fusion. Once that was dry, I did a quick sanding around the edges of the board, also where that trim is on the inside in those grooves. Now I'm taking one of the crackle stamps from the Vintage Textures stamp set by IOD and I am stamping all the way up the board. I'm going to be using this style to, on, with the base on the bottom and then I'm going to actually flip it upside down because it kind of stays in the right flow or I don't know, it, it looks like it's a flowing stamp if I do it this way. So that's how I'm going to stamp on the second part of this uh, board. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to take this bird from the Joie de Rose transfer set, the new IOD release. I had cut this out of part of the transfer that I had used in another uh, project either last week or the week before, but I was saving this bird for something special and it was perfect for this project. My favorite part as I transfer this on is when I go into the grooves of this board, it creates just a very natural distress and crackle that is just perfect for the style of and what I'm going for here. I do seal this with a polyacrylic sealer. And here is a look at the finished project. Next, we have this rolling pin. I have been looking for one of these rolling pins for so long, ever since I've seen other creators like Sonnet from Sonnet's Garden Blooms and others creating this Jamie, Jamie Ray Vintage. I love what they do with their rolling pins, the way they use stamps, the way they're using decoupage paper. I am so impressed. This is the first one that I've ever done and I was so nervous to mess it up. So it's going to be a much simpler project, but I really do love it. I'm going to start by whitewashing it, not whitewashing, I'm sorry. I'm going to start by giving it a paint wash in Oakum by Fusion. Now I'm going to paint the handles of the rolling pin in Laurentian by Fusion. This is a new color for me. I absolutely love it. It's probably one of my favorite bluish greens that I've gotten from that paint line. Um, I, you can see that I did actually try to do white on the sides and it just looked too boring. So I added this color instead and this is all I'm going to do to this rolling pin, at least for now. I want to keep it styled in my home this way for a bit and then I look forward to figuring out what I can do next with this one or any other ones that I thrift. I found another paper plate holder at my thrift store. I am so grateful for the viewer that told me what this is. This is actually something that I passed up many times at the thrift store. And after seeing it for like the fifth time, I finally was like, you know what? It's half off today. Let's just get it. So I got it for a dollar and I'm going to start by covering up that watermelon with um, Oakum by Fusion. As I'm working on all of these upcycled kitchen items, I'm really grateful that I found so many wonderful creators on YouTube who have inspired me to really reuse and repurpose, re, uh, thinking more carefully, I guess, about how I, the things that I buy and the things that I decide to give away or throw away. And um, that leads me to something I wanted to let everyone know about. I have been a part of a fitness application or a fitness um, group called the Nets Fitness Thing, and it has been the most inspiring and most wonderful thing I've ever done. So I would love to share that with you, and the reason I'm telling you about all this right now is that tomorrow there is a very special Earth Day walk that is open to everyone. It's an all-access class. You can join right from your phone, and you can come walking with us as we go out into the community. Um, it's the 
it's a really great cause and it kind of goes with the entire thought process of reusing, recycling, and keeping our earth clean. So I will leave links to the Next Fitness Thing website, this specific walk that is coming up tomorrow, and then a quick trailer about the program because I would love to share that with you. Okay, back to this tutorial. As I was chatting away, I actually switched to, not switched, I let the oakum dry and now I'm using a milk paint. It is um, called porcelain. It's one of the fusion milk paints and I mixed it up and I am going to be painting it all over this paper plate holder. I do end up giving this three coats and one of the things I wanted to show you is what this looks like as it dries down. If you bring the heat gun to it, look at the crackle that you can achieve with milk paint. For our next project, I found this handmade, uh, I think it's a banana holder or hanger, um, and it was made, I believe the date at the bottom was 1992. I had originally painted it in this pink and done the butterflies because it was going to be something that I used to hang my daughter's basket for Easter, but I never ended up getting it finished on time. So now we're gonna come in and style this up differently so it can be nice home decor, not a gift for a an almost eight year old child. <laughs> I'm painting the entire piece with oakum by Fusion and all it took was one coat to cover the pink. Now I'm gonna be mixing up a milk paint again, and this color is also by Fusion. It is called Silhouette, and I will be painting the entire piece with three coats of that color. And it's interesting to see the difference in what you achieve when you use the heat gun on milk paint on different projects. I achieved a lot of crackle on that last project. This one was not so much. And then there is one more piece you will see where I use milk paint, where I actually ended up with an entirely different finished look. Here's a sneak peek at what that crackle looks like on this piece. But before I give you the full reveal, I have some additional things that I will be using to style this piece. So this is a corn holder, like a corn on the cob holder, and I am going to be drilling holes on either side of this little holder and turning it into, I guess, like a little wooden basket. I'm gonna be taking some twine and tying it around one side and stringing some beads all along the um, twine until I get to the other side. Now I'm taking this faux greenery that I got off of Amazon. I can't remember if this is boxwood or eucalyptus. You guys have to tell me in the comments. I, they, I get them confused a lot. I am wrapping it at the base of the stems with some twine just to make it look a little bit more finished and not as fake. And I will be styling this greenery inside of this new wooden basket and hanging this basket on our little hanger.
I did have one more idea using something I've had in my stash um, that I wanted to try to hang on the hanger as well. This is this little frying pan. I had gotten it for Christmas. It was part of a, a little gift set that came with, I guess, cookie mix or pancake mix. And I never used it. I just kind of stashed it away and I pulled it out and wanted to try something new. So I am taking some antiquing glaze by Fusion and I am dabbing it on to the pan and then I'm putting some cinnamon on it. I know this is not a new trick or a new hack. It's a hack I've discovered based on YouTube, but I've never tried it. So I'm trying it now. I tried it on the back first because I wanted to make sure that it looked okay and that I did a good job. Um, before I move to the front. So now I've decided, okay, I got this. I'm going to do the entire front and give it a faux rust look. Once I achieved the look that I like, I took it outside, sprayed it with some clear matte by rust -Oleum, and here is a look at the finished project. For our final project today, I found this wooden bowl at Goodwill. I believe it was, oh, there it is, $3.99 at Goodwill. And I am going to start by painting it in cashmere by Fusion. I decided to take the bowl. I had painted, I had tried painting it conservatory. This is something that I tried a while back, a couple weeks ago. And now I've decided I want to try to make this a raised bowl that I can use as a centerpiece. So I have this other project that I have from a while ago. It was just one of those wooden boxes like we did in a recent video and a candlestick that I'd fused together. I'm now going to be taking some Gorilla Glue and gluing this onto the bowl so that it becomes the base for the bowl and um, once we do that we will then be bringing it together with a solid color rather than these two separate colors you see here. I put some weight on that um, bowl as it was drying and I let it dry. I actually left it for a couple days and now I'm coming back in with that same milk paint, the silhouette, and I'm going to be painting the entire piece in that color. As I got to the top of the bowl and began painting it, I loved the effect that I got with the milk paint as is. So I did not come in with multiple coats. I believe I, that the inside of the bowl, I only gave one, maybe a light second coat 
but I loved that it had this kind of washed and um, variety of color um, to the bowl. And you'll be able to see that in the finished project. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Please don't forget to check out that Earth Day walk that is tomorrow. I look forward to seeing everybody very soon. Have a wonderful Saturday.